Studio 74 is a 10-minute program that's shot, produced, hosted, and broadcast all through the ship. Oh, no. As jobs go, this one is very, very cool. We do things out here that make other people go, that's absolutely crazy. Well, it's, that's because it's absolutely crazy. <laughs> U.S. military might is dependent on warplanes that can fly anywhere, and those planes are dependent on ships that can carry them. During World War II, the bigger, faster Essex class was introduced, and that changed everything. Ever since, each successive class of carriers has seen new innovations and new capabilities. I've just spent the night on the Nimitz class USS John C. Stennis, where I've been given the privilege and the honor of working alongside the selfless men and women who have devoted their lives to protect the rest of us. The Stennis is an astonishing vessel and a technological marvel. There's just one thing they need to work on. It's a rough night. I'll be honest with you. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, the slamming of doors and landing of planes, and um, all of it echoes through that ductwork, basically. Comes out through that vent. Bill's character. Strength of character aside, what I really need is the strength of caffeine. First, though, I slip into something lavender and say a cheerful hello to XO Hack, who will now do his impression of a human alarm clock. You're about to wake everybody up. Oh, yes, I am. The happiest part of my day. Oh. So you have to find a way to capture in your tone uh -huh. a measure of inspiration urgency because it's time to get up uh -huh. it's time to rise it's time to shine but it's also literally time to spit and polish I'm so you, to, yep. you're, you're you're basically giving a bad news in a positive way That's right. oh, there it is. good morning king status of show gun at cxo it is wednesday the 29th of july hey there's no better way to start our day Did it. That was inspirational. Thank you. Ready to go play something? No, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> Maybe there's got to be something to clean over at the yeah, coffee place. Be, yeah. That coffee place must be a dusty mess. <laughs> Let's go get that squared away. Material condition hour is Navy talk, I think, for cleaning time. It's mandatory, and everybody participates. I'm able to move on to something that feels much more familiar, namely the Stennis' own broadcast TV station. I'm MC3 Viasana, and this is Studio 74. I love this show! Studio 74 is a 10-minute program that's shot, produced, hosted, and broadcast all through the ship. Oh, no. If you'd care to binge-watch Studio 74, check out John C. Stennis' YouTube channel. What? With its affable host. Wow. I could probably not do any of that. And seasoned field correspondents. Hi, uh, I'm MCSN Pernick. Studio 74 is the go-to show for up-to-the-minute Stennis news and safety tips. Well, that's it for Studio 74. And today, they've got a very special guest named me. Whenever you're ready, V, action. I'm Mike Rowe, and this is, what is it? Studio 74. Studio 74. <laughs> I'm Mike Rowe. Line. I'm Mike Rowe, and this is Studio See what I did? I'm Mike Rowe, and this... Mike Rowe here wearing a purple shirt, and this is uh, Studio 74. I'm Mike Rowe, and this is my hat. You can tell, because my name's on the back. And you know what this is? It's Studio 74. <laughs> my god, I could do this all day. I, uh, feel like I'm really, I feel like I'm really hitting my groove. <laughs> you, I got it. <laughs> so you've been pretty much trying every kind of job, it looks like. They're kind of running you through the drill so you can see it all. Which one have you found the most interesting so far? Yours is an organization that's based on a team. So whenever you profile the military, whenever you get on a boat or in a bunker or jump out of a plane or, you know, any of that stuff, the, the challenge for the guys with the cameras is to figure out, you know, how can we show the viewer uh, that this team is really a collection of 
individual humans doing very specific jobs. And it's hard because you can't cheat. You know, you have to kind of come and you have to stay and you have to spend time and you have to try and do the work. So there's not an uninteresting job on this ship that I've seen. Aircraft carriers win wars, no doubt about it. But they're also uniquely equipped to deliver humanitarian relief. When that devastating tsunami hit Southeast Asia in 2004, the surveillance aircraft of the USS Abraham Lincoln were quickly dispatched to conduct critical search and rescue operations. Days after the 2010 earthquake in Haiti killed 230,000 people, the USS Carl Vincent brought 19 helicopters and 2,000 Marines to deliver desperately needed supplies. In March of 2011, the USS Ronald Reagan brought food, water, clothing, and medicine to Japan's northeastern coast following a massive earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster that claimed more than 20,000 lives. Aircraft carriers can coordinate hundreds of flights that bring supplies to victims. Plus, their desalinization plants can make 400,000 gallons of fresh water every day. In other words, the same ship that has arguably the most technologically advanced weapon system in the history of warfare is also one of the most advanced instruments of peace. But this ship can't get either job done if the crew isn't properly fed. Like everything else on board, the crew eats in shifts, and the crew is hungry. You guys got room? Yes, sir. Be good. Oh. How's it going? All right, sir. How are you? I'm tired. You've been doing a lot, sir. You think? You did good talking to Chan last night in the hangar bay. Was that you yelling at me in there? That was not me yelling. I was there uh, observing. So what did you observe? Watching you almost get your hand run over by the tire. Pretty close. It was. Having been properly fed, I continue through the duty rainbow. Somewhere on this floating city, the ordnance crew is waiting for me. Dress code is red. My autumn tones. How we doing? Not too bad. Good. So, this is the bomb farm here. We're all aviation ordnance. We take care of all the missiles, bombs, rockets, everything that goes boom. Everything that blows up. I've been on many farms in my day, but never a bomb farm. Apparently, it's time to bring in the harvest. Should be interesting. I'm going to put you on the center one. All you got to do is step off the center. You're going to slide it off on our shoulder. Great. Right shoulder. Great. Several things go through your mind when you're holding a million dollar missile. Things like, this is a really expensive piece of military ordnance, so I'd better be careful. And this is really, really dangerous, so I'd better be really, really careful. But ultimately, this is really, really heavy, so I should lift with my legs. Just taking some uh, missiles off of some planes, you know, so another Wednesday. So we put one on or taking it off? Yeah, take that one off. We gotta take everything off, so. So all day long, you're taking them off, and then you, when do you put it back on? Still it's going out again, we load it all up again. Never stops. The missiles can't stay on the jets overnight, so they're constantly put on and taken off. Are they landed or just flying around? No, they're going to come in in just a minute. So we're stuck over here for right now. Yeah. Not a bad place to be stuck. It's not. And if this job wasn't dangerous enough, they do it on an active runway. Oh, it was? Yes, sir. Why didn't you tell me that? I just did. <laughs> now it's back to Fuchsia for a nice leisurely stroll on deck, otherwise known as an FOD walk. I'm just walking like I know where I'm going. I really don't. So I should stop and wait for somebody who knows. FOD stands for Foreign Object Debris. So you're Mike. Yes, I am. How long have you been on the boat? Uh, a little over a year. Where's home? Uh, Bakersfield, California. Sure. What are we looking for? Pretty much anything on the deck that could be a potential hazard to any aircraft to yeah. get caught in the exhaust. Eyes on the deck! Lock it out! So this is top speed? Yeah. 
People must walk this all their lives and never find anything. Yeah. I don't know if it'll happen today, but there's been times too where we'd have to restart the walk down. Why? Because uh, sometimes people would be like out here, like not really paying attention to the deck. Right. So like, go back, start it again. So people are watching us right now to make sure we're yeah. watching. Up in the tower. Sure. Binoculars, probably. <laughs> yeah. As it turns out, yes. it's my crew that needs watching. Really? Really, Doug? <laughs> this, you, of all people? Hey, at least I caught it, right? Yeah, you did. What is this exactly? What's that I do? down this handle here. Well, here, let me so put it on for you. This is it's not embarrassing at all. Ah, ah, ah. What's that? It's hard fun. You gotta yell out hard fun. What? You gotta yell out hard fun. Hard fun? Hard fun. Hard something. Hard fun. Hard fun. Somebody should document that. What is that? I mean, it looks like a BB or some sort of ball bearing or some tiny little steel booger. What is it? Uh, is it a ball bearing? Nope. Somebody's got somebody's ring. Oh my broken god. Broken earring. It's a broken earring? That's it. Who's wearing an earring out here? That's supposed to be. Not supposed to. Did anybody find a hard fought thing today? You're well, winning so far. Well, especially for that. Appreciate it. Is there a prize or anything? Uh, I get a candy bar out of it. There you go. They're winning. <laughs> it's Fod Walk. With the Fod Walk behind me, it's out of the purple and into the yellow to hang out with the shooters. As jobs go, this one is very, very cool. And my old pal, Lieutenant Slaughter, is going to show me exactly what it takes to get several tons of fighter jets safely into the air from this relatively small surface area. We do things out here that make other people go, that's absolutely crazy. Well, it's, that's because it's absolutely crazy. <laughs> I mean, you know this, right? Like anything else, landing a plane on a floating runway began with trial and error. Hundred years ago, there was more error than trial. Over time, though, we got the whole landing thing figured out. But then, the planes got bigger and heavier, which required somebody to figure out how to launch them off a very short runway. The solution was a sophisticated catapult system, powered by steam fed directly from the ship's reactors. That provides enough power to get a 45,000 pound plane from zero to 160 miles an hour in two seconds flat. But every successful launch requires a human element as well. This afternoon, the human is me, with a little help from Slaughter. That's Miley, he's one of our shooters. We'll watch him shoot a couple. Great. Obviously, these guys have done this before. They make it look easy. So once the cat's all set up, you're going to give them military power to say that well, the- Wait a minute. What am I going to be doing? You're going to be shooting them. What that guy just did? Smiley, yeah. You're going to be doing that. Now, Slaughter does his best to teach me the essential hand signals. Go like this, and that's right into military power. It's really loud. There's a lot going on. Honestly, I'm pretty sure I shouldn't be out here, which is more or less the story of my life. But really, it all comes down to communication. A combination of sign language and a very specific choreography between the shooter, the catapult operator, and the pilot. Each crew member knows his role. Each has memorized his moves, and each must execute them while paying close attention not just to the signals he's giving, but to those he's receiving as well. If it all goes right, we have a takeoff. Dude, there's a lot going on, man. There's a ton of stuff. We got the next jet. I don't know, man. We got it. Over the years, I've been allowed to attempt a great many things far beyond my actual skill set. My sincere hope today 
Aside from not sending a 25-ton, multi-million dollar aircraft into the deep blue sea is to at least create the illusion of competence. And if I screw up, well, I guess I could always blame slaughter. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of this, and there's some of this, and there's some of that, and then the plane fucking goes. For a minute there, it really started to feel as though I was launching fighter jets from the deck of a Nimitz-class aircraft carrier. But now, as I watch the footage, I'm pretty sure the pilots are ignoring my spasmodic flailings and focusing on whatever the expert is doing behind me. At least I hope they are. But either way, being this close to the action requires some sort of heartfelt summation. So we're sort of officially done. I just want to thank Sarah for uh, putting it all together because I know we slowed you down and I know we're kind of a pain in the neck, but, but you were great. Yeah. So do we do we cover everything you wanted us? Yes. Are you yes, on a scale of one very, to ten? Are you pleased? Job. Yes. I, I I'll say ten. Very a much. Ten? Yes, a ten. Really? Wow. Yes, yes. Good but job. your hands are on your hips, and all body language suggests that that could mean you're being kind. No, it just means. Your hands my on your hands hips. are on my hips, <laughs> exactly. Thanks for your hospitality. Hey, thank you for coming out and visiting You're us. It's awesome. All right. See you next time. All right. All right. There's several ways to get off an aircraft carrier, but really only one sensible way to end a show like this. Put those over your head. Ted and I will now leave the USS Stennis with a little help from the aforementioned catapult. If you're looking for first-class luxury in the friendly skies, you might think twice about flying in a transport plane. Along with a rough takeoff and a couple of Gs, there's the smell of jet fuel, stifling heat, and no beverage service. On the other hand, if you're looking for a reason to feel good about the country, spend some time on an aircraft carrier and get to know the people on it. These incredibly dedicated and unbelievably young Americans volunteered to protect the likes of you and me. These are the people who have our backs and this floating runway. It's their mobile home. For the next six months, they'll be out here. No drinking, no sex, no cell phones. Just work and service and commitment and courage. Where the Stennis goes next is anybody's guess. But one thing's for sure, the 5,200 men and women along for the ride all understand that somebody's got to do it. And this is the place where it gets done. <laughs>